This video is part two of the section A question one for the grade 12 exemplar for 2018 and it's for RT paper one, the practical paper. Now this question is dealing, or this paper is dealing with the LAN gaming and LAN parties. So that's the theme throughout the paper and we did question 1.1 and 1.2 in part one. We're doing part two now where we're doing 1.3. And so here they tell us that the number of tables required for all the players will take need to be calculated and that each table at the venue can accommodate about six players. So six players. And there's a constant variable called table size that's been provided. Okay. We must calculate how many tables will be required to accommodate the number of players. So they're going to type in obviously the number of players there and we must say how many tables will be needed. Um, as you can see there, the number of tables. So 86 players would need 15 tables. And we need to write the code for the amount of power. So they will say that we can assume that each computer needs 0.66 kilowatts. And we will use one computer during the event for each player. And we must obviously, if there are 86 players, we're just going to times that by 0.66 to work out the wattage, the kilowatt. Um, I think uh, they said we must round it as well. That seems quite simple. The only, the only tricky thing or the mathematical thing we've got to be aware of is the number of tables. Okay, so let's have a think about this. So if we've got 86 tables and we can fit six people around the table, we need to find out how many times six can go into 86 for a full table. Now we can't, it might be a decimal value. So we can't have 0.5 or 0.32 of a table. So we need to work out how many times 6 goes into 86, and therefore we know exactly that's how many tables we definitely need. However, if there's some sort of remainder left over, if we divide 6 into 86 and there's any remainder, that means there are going to be some leftover people that don't make a full table, but we still need to accommodate them. So if we have some extra people that are left over, then we must probably add 1 on to the number of tables for the leftovers, the ones that don't make a full table of 6. However, if the remainder is zero, then we don't need to add that. So those, those are ways that we can do it. And then the wattage should be quite simple. So let's go to our question. There's the value. We're going to get the number of people from num players. So they've, you see, they've created a constant for us called table size. That's a constant value. And the reason for that is um, if we want to change table size to an eight, we don't have to go and change the eight value throughout the code. We can just change that constant variable. Um, but we're going to make our own variable for the number of people. Number of people. And that's going to obviously be an integer because we can't have half a person. And we're going to get the number of people from the EDT number of players edit control. We're going to get it from the text property. However, if you remember, that is a string and that is an integer. So we need to convert it from what it is, a string, to what we want it to become, an integer. So we're going to go from string to int. So there we go. So now we've got the number of players. Now we need to work out the number of tables. That will also be an integer. So I want to look at uh, tables. Now, as we said, the number of tables, we need to find out how many tables, how many times six can go into the number of people. So we take the number of people and we divide it by the table size. You could divide it by 6, but we've got that constant, so we must use that constant variable. So if we ever change it to an 8, then this will all work automatically. So that's great. But if we div, div that's obviously going to return a real number. We don't want a real number. We want the exact number of times that 6 can fit in there. Forget about what's left over. So we're going to use a div instead of a divide. Let me use two integers. That should tell me how many full tables of 6 can fit in our scenario. Now, for those leftovers, for the poor leftover people that don't have a table of six, I'm going to say if the number of people mod table size, if that is greater than naught, which means we've got some leftovers. It could, if it's a naught, we don't worry because then we've got the exact number of people, we've got a multiple of six. But if we've got maybe 61, which is not a multiple six, we've got one person left over, they need a table. So if the leftovers are a one or a two or a three or a four or five, then while well, we've worked out the number of tables already, I'm just going to add one to it. So take whatever's in the tables already and plus one. You could have also said increase our tables. That would have also worked. 
Um, so we just increase the number of tables. So then, then we can say the edit box, the number of tables dot text is going to equal to our tables. But that is an integer and that's a string. So we convert it from what it is, an integer, to what we want it to become, a string. An integer to string. Fantastic. So that's the number of tables. So that, as you said, is to let, work out if there are any extra people that don't fit in a full table of six. Now we need to work out the wattage. Now the wattage is the number of players, so the kilowatts, and that's going to be also an integer. So the R usage, I'll call it, usage. Um, R usage is equal, ooh, that's terrible spelling is going to be the number of players and each player will use 0.66 for their computer but that's a real number we saw in an integer and the reason because they said in the question if i remember correctly something about the word rounded to the nearest kilowatts so rounded to the nearest uh, value so let's go round and it takes that real number and puts rounds it so let's see if that works hopefully and we'll put that into the number of uh, the EDT power. I've got the power. So there we go. R usage. But that is an integer, and we want to put it into a string. So we convert it from what it is, an integer, to what we want it to become, a string. Let's see if it works. Hope it works. Please work. Please work. I'm not very confident in my coding abilities if I keep on hoping that it works. And in the example, they wanted 86. So let's see if we get the same values. 86, please. 15, 56. That looks pretty spot on. So if I said 60, that would be 10 tables exactly. But if I'd say 61, we need one table for that one person. We need So 11 is fine. Up until 5, that is fine. The moment I go to 66, that means we've got 11 full tables. We don't need to worry about the extra person. But if I go to 67, now we've got one extra person, which will be at a 12th table. Okay. Seems to be working. Fantastic. Next question. Now this button, what does it say? Question 1.4. This is probably going to be the toughest one of the lot. But we can do it. We can do it. Okay, so we must enter the total number of units of electricity required to host the party. So we've got so many units. And we must randomly generate a value from 50 to 149 which will be the estimated daily usage of the electricity. So we just assume in here. That's fantastic. And we must display that value in the relevant edit box. Or they will display it there. Okay, there. So we're going to display that value there. So we're going to calculate a random number. Then we must calculate the number of humans left for each day's gameplay. Okay, based on that estimated figure. So display the information as shown in the MIMO box. So... This example, we've got 500 units. They've obviously randomized some number to get 89. So day one, if you use 89 units, you'll only have 4, 11 left. And looks like we use that same number for each and every day. So they're assuming that we're using that random number every single day. So it will go down by another 89, by another 89, by another 89, by another 89. And we must stop when we've got nothing left when we've used up our 500 units. Okay, so depending on that random number, this could be any number of days. It could be five days, it could be three days, it could be, because like if you get 149 on the dot, you can only use a couple of days. So we actually don't know how many days it's going to occur for, but we're going to keep on doing this. So we're going to be looping, but we don't know how many times we're going to be looping, which means we cannot use a for loop. We don't know how many times we're going to be doing the loop, so we're going to need to do some sort of while or repeat loop. So I'm going to, first of all, get the value from the units edit control. So we're going to make a variable called our units, which we'll make into some sort of integer. And we need to have some sort of usage, or what do they call it? Our usage. So let's call it our usage. And first of all, we're going to get the units from that edit control, which is edit units, and it's going to get it from the text property, but that is a string. We convert it from what it is to what we want it to become, an integer, so that it fits into our units. 
And now we need to make a random number for our usage. That's going to be a random number. Now, um, that is a random range, which takes in two numbers. Ooh, it doesn't recognize it. Mm. Doesn't I know there is a random range. Ah, I think it's because you need to add math at the top if you want to use random range. So I'm going to add math at the top. So the math library, it's a lovely feature. Let's go down. Does random range disappear? Yes, it's disappeared from the, with the red line, so it seems to recognize it. So let's try to get random range. Ah, from... I think we said 49, eh? what's the, what was the value? From 50 to 149, so from 50 to 149, close brackets, and that will generate a random number, and we will put that into EDT daily usage, I'm assuming, I can always go check, and we're going to put that I usage into the text control, the text property of that edit box. Ah, but that's an integer which we must convert from what it is to what we want it to become, a string, so that it fits into the text property. Now, obviously, our display won't be 80, 86. I think it was 86. 80. Let's have a look. In, the, in this example, they had 89. We can't guarantee that that will happen, so we put in 500, and it's a, it'll be a different number each time. Okay, so it is working. Okay, so we got 82, that was close. So, we're going to do this. So we need some sort of variable that's going to be the number of days. Now, with a while loop or a repeat loop, we don't have a looping variable. So we have to make a looping variable. So I'm going to make our days equal to zero at the start. And what are we going to do? Well, we're going to keep going until our units are used up. So we can go while. We can, oh, not there. What did I do there? Undo, undo, there we go. So we can over here, we're going to say, okay, we can just use a while control. Okay, while do something, I don't know what. We're going to figure out that. I always do my conditions at the end. So let's go there, put an end, that's the end of the while. So what are we doing? Okay, we're going to, first of all, we're going to take our usage and minus it from the unit. So the units will be whatever the units is now minus the usage. Okay, great. We must increase the days. So days will become, in this first time, it'll become a one. So we've on day one. That's fantastic. Then we must display it like that. Units after day one. So then we must say memo display dot lines dot add. And we're going to say the word units after day. And that one we're going to get from the days variable, so our days, but that's an integer, so we we'll convert from an int to a string, and then after that, we're going to put the text, a space and a colon, and then another space, and then we're going to add the actual number of units, which is also an integer, which we need to convert from an int to a string, so that it can be constructing one long string, Mr. Long String, to put it into the member control. Oh, and we, we also want to make sure that we have nothing in the memo control when we start. So let's clear the memo control. So we're going to keep on doing this until when? Well, while we still have units left. So while our units will start off, for example, being 500, then we're going to minus, um, let's say, 89. And then we're going to minus another 89. So while we still have units, so while units is greater than naught, we're going to keep doing it. The moment our units becomes less than naught, then we obviously don't have enough, so then we will stop. So let's have a look and see if that works. Please work. So we're going to put in 500. Remember, our usage will be different. Okay, so there it goes over and beyond the amount. Okay, so that's a bit tricky. So we've got 137, so that's, if I calculate a different one, 90, so there we go. So we're getting close, but we need to figure out how to get rid of that negative amount. Okay, so we don't know how to get, so let's look. So it's working, the 90 is going down, but how do we stop it from going to the negative? Well, okay, so let's think about the mathematics here. Okay, so the units will be five, let's say it's 100. The random number is 100. So we take the units, let's say it's 500, and we'll make it, we'll make it 90. So, so we'll make it from 500, we minus the usage 90, it'll become 410. Then we minus another 90, it'll become 
320 and so on and so on. We actually don't want to go when it's that. When we have, when it's less than the number of units that are left for usage. Okay, so if we need 90 for one day, when units gets below that 90, we can't do this again because we don't have enough for that day. So instead of being less than naught, when it's less than the usage, in other words, the units left over is not enough for a full day. So if it's 500 and then becomes 410 and then 320, the moment that value becomes less than how much we need for one day, we will stop so that we don't display the negative. So does that make sense to you? So when our 500 keeps minus in 90, when it gets when it gets below the 90, that means we don't have enough units for a full day, so we don't even display that last little day. Let's see if it works now. So we put in 500 again. Calculate. And there we go. Eight days, and it stops before it goes into the negative. So that looks good. Let's try it again. Let's see if I can get close. 89. What are the chances we got to the 89? We got it exactly like that number. So let's see if our answer is perfect. No, not that. There. there. There, 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 there we go. Let's look. Ah, oh, and urethra. I mean, Rika, it is done. It is perfect. Well done. We got it all right. That was very <laughs> unlikely for that to happen. But that's great. So we got it all done. That's question one, section A, which is the very easy grade 10, grade 11 stuff. We will then go into part two or part three, which we will start looking at section B, which is the second question of this exemplar. For the other videos of this exemplar paper, you can go to our YouTube channel and go look at the playlists and you'll see lots of playlists of other topics that can help you with your Delphi programming. So please follow us on YouTube, go follow our Facebook page and our Twitter account and remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.